Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Download the notes at kcm.org slash notes. Let's go to Mark chapter 5. Now we've... We have, we have talked about the believer has faith. We've talked about um, faith that moves mountain. But now we're talking about actually moving the mountain. And we're talking about, Jesus said, as we read in Matthew 21, 21, you shall not only do that which was done to this fig tree. He spoke to that fig tree. But if you say to this mountain, be thou removed, it'll obey you. Now then, Mark chapter five. How is faith released or applied? It's not enough to understand the laws that govern physics unless you apply them, right? I mean, it wouldn't do any good to know the laws of electricity if you don't ever apply it. What is that? That is applied science. All right. Before we, hold your place there, Mark. We want to, let's, let's read something from the book of Romans. 3:27 Where is boasting then it is excluded by what law of works no but by the law of faith Now in the 8th chapter of Romans verse 1 There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Make note of this. Faith filled words dominate the laws of sin and death. Let me say it again. Faith filled words dominate the laws of sin and death. Now, when you're talking about faith, there are laws of the spirit, spiritual laws that must be put in motion Faith lies dormant in your born again spirit until a demand is placed on it. And we're going to see this uh, right here in this fifth chapter of Mark. Let me say it again because I want you to get this. Faith lies dormant. We need to be, see, your faith ought to not ever, ever go dormant. It don't need a rest. It needs food. It needs to be exercised. Spiritual exercise, not natural carnal things. Faith lies dormant until a demand is placed upon it. Now we were in the book of James yesterday and when a demand a test, temptation, and trial comes against your faith and you rise up against that with your faith, now you've re you release steadfastness and you say, I'm here to stay, I'm not changing. Mm -hmm. That's translated there as patience. It, natural carnal patience means to just put up with. No, 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 no. No, supernatural patience. It is, a, it is part of the spirit. Amen. So when, when you put these powerful spiritual forces together, then a demand is made. You, you stay stuck with it and, and endurance will have her perfect work and you will become 
absolutely victorious, wanting nothing. That's big. Wanting nothing. So now, Mark chapter five, are you there? Let's read this in um, Oh, let's begin with uh, verse 25. A certain woman which had an issue of blood, I'm, I'm reading this purposely, I'm, I'm reading it a little bit slower because I want you to hear these words. I want you to see this situation. A certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing bettered but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, Faith cometh by hearing. Now you stop to think about this. This, sound, this all sounds like this happened one afternoon and the whole thing took place in about 30 minutes. No, she didn't just do this that day. You, you'll see where it, it, it'll tell you that in just a moment. She, somebody had told her what he's preaching because he preached the same thing everywhere he went. For the, Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, to preach recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which is supernatural debt cancellation. So that he preached that everywhere he went. And then he dealt with the rest of the message, just like in his own hometown. That's what he preached. They didn't believe a word of it. So they didn't get anything. She heard it and believed it. Faith came. Now, this is going to, if you've not made this study before, this is going to up, this is going to up in a lot of old religious cows. <laughs> I can hear some of them now. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to bust her right between the eyes too. She heard of Jesus and came in the press behind and touched his garment for she said. Put your eyes on that. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall or will be Ho! Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. Now I want you to notice this. The blood dried up and then she felt in her body. She didn't feel it first and then believe it. She believed it and then it took place. When she went out there, she is still sick. But now she had obviously spent some time with this. Because the, the Greek text actually says, and she kept saying, she, she, she kept saying, she heard what he preached and faith kept coming. 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 And it got strong enough. One day she decided, I'm going to get out in this. I'm going to get this. But now see, it was against the law for her to be in public with that issue of blood. She could have been stoned for that. So she knows this. And here's Jesus coming down the road and following him is the leader of the synagogue, Jairus. She thought she could sneak out there. I don't think she's crawling because she couldn't walk. She's crawling because she don't want anybody seeing her. Right. That's good. Right. 
She's probably not walking all that good. But whatever it was, she got out there. But she thought, I can sneak up there. I can touch. She wasn't talking about his coat. It was his prayer shawl. He's a rabbi. Jesus is a Jew. And he's a rabbi. And he's wearing that shawl. And she can see it out from under his top garment. And she's thinking, I get my hands on that. I'll be healed. And I can back out of there. Now notice it. Now, now that you know the action, you can see where it's written. She said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be whole. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Jesus immediately knowing in himself that virtue. Now in this case, it's dynamis. We get our word dynamite from it. Explosive power. He was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. That was healing power. He knew that that power had gone out of him and turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Now I want you to notice this. Faith needed a demand put on it. And she set up a point of contact in her heart and mind. She said, when I touch his clothes, I'll be made whole. That was her point of releasing her faith. That was her point where she said, at that point is when I believe it. Now she is believing it all this time. And she said it with her mouth, but she needed some action. Now here again, the scripture says, faith without works is dead. We'd have to go back to the book of James. We don't have time to go back over there. Actually, the scripture says, faith without corresponding action dies. You have to put action to what you believe. You believe in your heart, you say it with your mouth, and then you act on it. Being a doer of the word. A person that is not a doer of the word is like a person looking into a mirror, turns around, walks away, and forget what he looks like because he didn't make a decision to see anything except for the moment. But the doer of the word, listen, listen, to what, listen, listen to what the Holy Ghost through James said about this. The doer of the word looks into the perfect law of liberty. When you're a doer of the word, faith comes by hearing, hearing of the, by the word of God. And then you believe it, you say it, and then you act on it, releasing that faith. It becomes the perfect law of liberty. Wow. It will come to pass if you won't compromise it. Yes, sir. When you do compromise it, Repent, get up, and go again. You remember how stupid both of us were before we knew this? Well, I'll tell you what. I just some way or another, I'm going to quit these cigarettes. I'll tell you, they say, I'll just hate them. I'll just hate them. I'll just hate them. I'll just hate them. I didn't hate them at all before I got saved. <laughs> and, and I... Man, I was throwing more away more of them than I smoked. Well, you can cry and squall and bawl all day long. It ain't going to do you any good. If that'd do any good, everybody'd be just up and going. No. <laughs> but when I got in the Word for the very first time in my life, it separated me I wasn't even trying to quit. 
I just stuck them up over the sun dog and got in this word place. And this is before I went to ORU. I just went to some meetings that, that uh, Hilton Sutton, Charles Rogers were having down in Houston. I went down there and got, got in the first kind of, of any word I'd ever heard in my, my life. And uh, a couple of weeks later, I looked up there and there's those cigarettes stuck up over that sun bar. And I said, I'm through with you. <laughs> it was the word that separated me. Yes, well, we don't have time to get in that, but I looked into the perfect law of liberty. Yes, I did. Now I didn't learn that what I'm teaching you here. That, that came later. Now, Jesus knew that that anointing had gone out of him. Now, this is, you got your catchers out. Listen, his disciples said, you see the multitude throng in you who touched me. He looked around about to see her, done this thing. The woman fearing and trembling. Oh no, they caught me. I know I'm healed, but I ain't had no business being out here. <laughs> See, she's still conscious of the law. And let me tell you a little something. I can't prove this, but you can't prove it isn't. <laughs> and you'll see it. See, Jairus had fallen at Jesus' feet and made his faith statement, come lay my hands on, your hands on my daughter, she'll live. And that's the last thing he said. Right. And he's following him home. He's the leader of the synagogue. He knew her and she knew him. I believe that. I may get to heaven and find out they just didn't know one another all that good, maybe didn't know one another at all. But it appears that they most likely did because they're both from that same area and she knows enough to know that I ain't got any business being out here in this street. Well, she's only been healed about 30 seconds, but she'd been sick for how long? 12 years. Her mind hadn't been renewed yet. She's, she's frightened about being out there. But now she told him all the truth. He said to her, daughter, are you ready for this? Daughter, your faith made you whole. Well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We know it was his anointing that did it. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he's anointed me. It was his anointing, it, that was the power that did it. But Jesus did not initiate the flow of that power. She stopped him in the street. Huh? She went out there and got hold of that garment. She said it. First, she believed it in her heart. And she said, so she had spent time enough to meditate on this and believe this. And finally, her faith came to a place where it, it, it rose up and rose up and it came, man, it, 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 it had come to a climax. She's got to get in the street and she's got to get a hold of that garment. Well, the moment she did, Jesus stopped. Now, J. Iris's faith put Jesus on the move. See, he's going home with him. And her faith stopped him. Wow. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Think about it. Think about it, sweetheart. He's just hunting for somebody that'll just believe it in their heart and say it with their mouth and get a hold of the garment. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, daughter, your faith made you whole. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I think it'd be good for you to start praising God right now. Because as you praise God, as, as you praise God, as you hear the word, and as you praise God, if you'll release, if you'll release your faith in your praise right now, instead of just putting, putting words in your mouth, let it, let it come out. Use your faith. 
I praise you, sir. I believe this. I believe it with, with every, every fiber of my being. And I praise you and I thank you. This is for me. I, this is for me. I see it in your word. By, by your stripes, I was and I am healed and I release my faith. I'm praising you over it right now. I'm thanking you for your healing power. I'm thanking you for your word. Your word cannot fail and you cannot miss it. Now here's where you really, 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 you understand what I mean, really? Don't ever allow yourself to get so problem oriented that you spend all of your time looking at it, all your time thinking about it, and let it get in your mouth. I didn't say it was easy. It was everybody be doing it. But in the grace of God, it is easy when you finally let go of it and say, Jesus, Jesse Duplantis said he get a big old handful of TV bills one time and he said, Jesus, you got mail. <laughs> you you got to be like that. You're going to be not worrying about this. Yes, yeah, but Jesse got a lot of money. <laughs> he started out with a Toyota that wouldn't hardly make it. <laughs> and just ran it one night till it was absolutely slap out of gas and, and pushed it up into a service station and said, well, Lord, here I am. But I'm not quitting. There's a guy who walked up there and said, uh, you need some gas. He says, yeah, I do. He says, well, fill her up. Wish I had somebody do that. Well, wishing they ain't gonna get it, darling. <laughs> you stretch yourself, you stretch your resources, you keep your mouth full of faith, and Jesus will be looking at you and say, I'm gonna tell you something, your faith's what made you hope. If it hadn't been for your faith, my power wouldn't have moved. My power wouldn't have done anything. and we're out of time. Somebody give the Lord praise. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Be sure to get the notes at kcm.org notes. And remember, Jesus is Lord.